This video will show you how to build a tin can rocket stove, which was designed and demonstrated by Larry Winiarski at the Rotary International Integrated Cooking Workshop, Santiago Tlautla, Mexico, in July 2008. For this demonstration, we used a 5 gallon salad oil can to make the rocket stove. Eight 4.5 by 9 inch thin facing bricks are used to make the chimney and the horizontal tunnel. To assemble the horizontal tunnel, you will have to cut two of the bricks into four and five inch pieces. Note the bricks stacked on either side of the horizontal tunnel to hold it in place while the tunnel and chimney are being assembled. One of the five inch brick sections is used to enclose the top of the horizontal tunnel. The other five inch section encloses the back of the tunnel. The two four inch brick sections are placed end to end to form the bottom of the horizontal tunnel. Note the wires wrapped tightly around the top and bottom of the four bricks that form the chimney. Three of the chimney bricks should be cut to make them three quarters of an inch or two centimeters shorter than the fourth brick. You'll also need to cut off a small corner of the longer brick at the front of the chimney so it will fit between the sides of the horizontal tunnel. Before cutting an opening in your tin can, measure the size of the opening of the brick horizontal tunnel, then mark it on the can. We're going to cut this here and then bend this open. What kind of a knife? Machete would work fine. Oh, okay. You sharpen it good. Now that the bricks have been cut and a hole made in our tin can rocket stove, we're ready to start assembling it. We're putting in the four inch bricks end to end to form the bottom of the horizontal tunnel. Okay, we put the horizontal tunnel in first and put stones around it to lock it in place. Remember to secure the metal wings and the bricks of the horizontal tunnel with a tightly wrapped wire. Place the chimney on the horizontal tunnel with the long brick facing forward. Once the chimney is in place, fill in the rest of the space around the chimney with pumice stones. If you don't have access to pumice stone, you can fill the empty cavity in the stove with ash or with a 50-50 mix of mud and straw or mud and rice hulls. The lighter you can make the mud, the more insulation it will provide. Put it in gently and don't pack it down. Eventually what we're going to do is we'll get the, uh, the clay and we'll put a nice top on this that will taper from, from here up to here. Half inch spacers placed around the opening of your rocket stove, then cemented into the clay by firing up the stove, will keep the pot lifted above the stove and will keep a hot, smokeless fire burning in your rocket stove. Spacers can also be welded onto a circular heating plate designed to hold a tortilla pan. This plate should sit directly on the top of the stove so that all of the heated air will pass around the spacers and under the tortilla pan. We have 16 square inches here, we have 16 square inches here, and we have approximately 16 square inches for the full bend. So that's why the spacers have to be a certain height. Sheets of corrugated roofing tin can be cut to make a skirt for your pot to further concentrate the heat of the fire around the cooking vessel and increase the efficiency of your stove. Be very careful when you're cutting the tin roofing sheet. It's sharp and you can get cut. The idea here is to direct the heat so it comes up the sides of the pot 
heat that, that, that comes out here is missing the pot. So if we put the sleeve around there, it bends the heat and forces it to go up the sides. Tin can rocket stoves are easy to make with locally available materials. They are easy to transport and can dramatically reduce the amount of wood needed by a family to cook food and heat water. We hope this film will enable people around the world to build their own tin can rocket stoves, reduce the smoke in their kitchens, and save our precious forests. Thanks for watching.